Hey everyone, uh, just thought I'd uh, make a short video here of a really interesting rifle that I have in my possession right now. It's an 1816 Harper's Ferry uh, flintlock musket. I'll just kind of do a quick pan here. Um, this particular musket is um, its really nice. It's in its original flintlock configuration. Um, it's a contract musket. These were normally made by Harper's Ferry or Springfield Armory. This is an L. Pomeroy contract musket. It's marked 1829. Let me see if you can see that. Yeah. Anyway, um, this particular musket, made in 1829, you can see the markings on the, the uh, hardware there. Um, this particular musket, made in 1829, was uh, saw a lot of action in basically all your early Indian Wars, your Texas Revolution, your Mexican-American War, all the way up through the Civil War. Um, El Pomeroy made about 21,000 of these contract rifles. Um, a lot of them... Uh, in 1860 were converted to percussion. It's not unusual to see a uh, percussion conversion. Um, the South did use these in the flintlock form because the arsenals that had them in the South when they seceded, they didn't convert them. So in the early days of the Civil War, when the South was struggling with firearms, uh, you did see these in action rarely. Um, this particular gun is um has great markings on it um it was inspected by um a justin murphy who inspected contract arms in the uh early 1800s and it does have his initials right there if you can see it jm now there are other markings right here it says jm then it says ninth aco have no clue what 9th ACO is. Done a little bit of research, couldn't figure it out, have no clue. If anyone knows, leave comments in the comment section. We'd uh, love to know it. Um, it's got great U.S. markings on it. Um, all in all, it, this is a solid, solid piece. Um, they're, I don't want to say they're, they're rare because between Harper's Ferry and Springfield Armory and the contracts, they made almost 700,000 of them. But to find one in this condition in its original configuration, is just it's just a really unique and nice piece. Um, it's got great patina. There's no real pitting on it. Um, all in all, it's just a real fine example of, of an early U.S. military firearm. Um, I will note that this, this actual design was designed after the French Charleville, which was the French rifle commonly used uh, during the American Revolution. You know, everyone's familiar with the Brown Bess, but the uh, French Charleville was one of the other rifles that they used. And they, when they designed this particular rifle, they used that rifle as a pattern and upgraded on it to make this. Again, 69 caliber, which is standard for uh, U.S. military. And uh, everything, someone did put a flint in there, which I haven't taken out because I didn't see any real need to. Um, it, everything works on it. The lock mechanism, I'm not going to fire it or anything. But, but uh, everything is pretty solid on this rifle. This is a great rifle. Um, and it's a bonus to anyone's collection. I suggest if you have the funds and you can find one to pick one up. I mean, although this is in fireable condition, it wouldn't, I personally wouldn't, but this would make an awesome, outstanding wall hanger. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. There'll be pictures um, linked to it, you know, with more details on it. So take a look at the, uh, the article, take a look at the pictures. Um, if you have any comments on it or any more additional information, let us know. 
Anyway, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everyone, have a great day.